Juan, thank you so much for joining uh, today. I, um, I always think of you as a model of an architect. You know, uh, we all have our models and you're certainly one of mine. Uh, you have a beautiful practice with, uh, you know, incredible buildings uh, being completed or, or just completed in Oslo and Colombia, um, you know, that are really public buildings and, and, uh, and so, so interesting. And so congratulations on that. But I'm always amazed because you're really an architect who, who designs, who builds, but you also write. And, and you don't write, it's not uh, the kind of, usual scholarship you really write as an architect and I wanted to think and, and I always remember one time I asked you know how do you do all this and you told me you even write for your for you know when you're when you're making design suggestions you, you write to your office yeah. so so it's it's you know writing is really fundamental to your way of being an architect and I wanted to expand on this relationship between writing drawing and building uh, as you as you see it well, it's true that I, I write a lot. Uh, I write uh, not only the texts that are known and, and published, and I, and I write uh, uh, every day when I am traveling to connect with my office. So my office used to send to me drawings and I comment then uh, writing, not drawing uh, or sketching. No? Uh, this is a big effort for me, uh, but I think it's also uh, uh, the best way in my case to keep the kind of con conceptual conversation about what we're doing or what we want to do, and also to give some uh, protagonism to, to the people of my team. No? I think that this question of writing is, 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 the, is the nexus between the practitioner and the professor. No? Or let's say in these hard times we are living now, we need practitioners, but we need thinkers. And the next future will be the result of this conversation be between the people who have the clarity to talk about the future and the people who have to do it. No? So I think a group of architects, we are in the middle and, and we are uh, the, you know, the, the hinge of this uh, conversation between the pure theory and the pure pragmatic uh, practice. No? And writing for me is exactly the the media the medium to to get that. No? It's also interesting. You mentioned traveling, and of course, right now we, we are not doing that. But yeah. but but I again as a as a model of a kind of architectural practice and someone who's been in, in, very engaged with uh, with this time uh, we are in for architecture. Uh, you articulated a, an idea of a global practice that's very unique, which is not the, you know, the global firm that works everywhere, but really you chose a few places where you mm -hmm. connected, where you felt like you're, you can be both local and global at the same time. You understand mm -hmm. the culture and at the same time you can zoom out. And, and, and I think that's given the work a certain richness. And I know you're bringing that to your studios, the, the sense of, having students be very particular in the way that they kind of learn about context and, and a place. And I wanted to mm -hmm. hear a little bit more about that, that sense of how you, how you uh, allow, for example, you've been looking at the rural uh, condition uh, for some time and or post-industrial sites or, you know, thinking about the past and the future. And uh, so the sense of connection to a, uh, a place that we sort of understand, but not quite, and how we decide to engage with it. I think in a few years we have changed it completely. Our idea of global practice, no, uh, I think from the enthusiasm of ten years ago, talking about nomadic practices and, and traveling a lot, and the, uh, this mythology of the architect being in every place, every day, uh, no. Uh, and now we are more critical with that, uh, but also more reflective and more realistic, no? So I would say that we have to learn, we have to, to teach our students to be local in many places. And we have also the responsibility, when I say we, I, I'm talking about the middle age uh, architects, no? Uh, of imagine ourselves every day being a young architect. So, uh, of course, we are not going to travel that much as we have done till a few months ago in the future, I think. 
or it would be good that we take that as a, as a, as a responsibility. We are not going to be so uh, personalistic and, and individuals, uh, and we have to invent new new ways of working in this complex world that uh, now is absolutely evident and true that we have to build a new one, you know? And, and, and the pedagogical practice is for me the laboratory for all this, but also because we have to educate uh, these architects that are going to perform in a world that is different than the one we have learned or we have been trained. You know? So, um, of course, this is going to be super useful for us uh, too, but uh, this, uh, this is the moment. This is the moment I, I think the schools of architecture, university in general, and the school of architecture in our case, is the only place where these changes can be explored and can be redesigned and can be redescribed, you know? So I think that this idea of the global practice is too broad, but we understand very well what we are talking about when you say global practice. It's a global thinking, it's a way of perform. It's not related to how many miles you have flight in the year. It's really more, more intense and more, more deep. And, and it's the way we are, we can really be part of this future that we want to help the others to be. This makes me think of this incredible project you've been doing for a number of years at, at Columbia, at GSAP, on constructing practices, mm -hmm. constructing engaged yeah. practices, and how you, you, I really, you felt, you went almost around the world, I mean, through your thinking and explorations and, uh, and uh, you know, brought to the fore uh, young, young emerging practices uh, from, you know, that were operating incredibly locally, but with, you know, the most ambitious um, ideas. And I mean, many of them came to speak as part of your uh, Constructing Practice Symposia. And I know you're working on the book and it's really inspiring for students to see, okay, there are many, many different models to construct practice. Um, and so I wanted to, to take that project and ask you, you know, what are, you know, uh, you know, when are you, like, what do you see happening with it in the next two year, especially given that we really need to not just construct practice, but life again uh, uh, after COVID. And also how I know you, you want to tie with the question of climate and they're all interconnected, right? And so the local, um, um, the question of climate, the question of engagement and, and, you know, constructing meaningful practices and how you might already imagine these things intersecting. Um, well, I, I have to say that the, the experiment of the editions of the Constructing Practice uh, Symposium has been quite uh, impressive for me uh, because I think, and I was not so conscious at the beginning that this was coming, that uh, we have been educated in this uh, admiration, uh, like in vertical admiration to the masters, no? to our professors or the, the big names of architecture. No? And of course that makes sense. Uh, they are the guides and, and, and they open many doors. At the same time, to cross that with kind of horizontal uh, understanding of what's happening now. So to help the students to look at the masters, but at the same time, look at other uh, small practices, people like them trying to do something different in different uh, contexts uh, has been really Im impressive in the way uh, the students have received it. And the young practitioners that were invited to the school uh, discovered that we, they, they were part of, of something. You know? I think that this is also, especially in the last edition when we did this constructing engaged practices, is, is part uh, of an intuition about the, 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 the practitioners that we are going to need in the future. No? Uh, of course, this um, climate change is it's already in, in every agenda and our school is really doing it very consciously and very, very seriously. And all the questions around environmental justice and social sensitivity are already the front page of, 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 of our, uh, for many architects and, and for many programs uh, and, and institutions and we have to be part of that. No? But I think that they got thinking in the future um, the next practices, the next uh, generation of practices will be totally affected and, uh, by these changes and they will be totally new. So 
even keeping the same names, teamwork is just going to be the same that it was 20 years ago. Uh, teamwork will, will, will mean something uh, completely, completely unexpected. No? Uh, a commission will mean completely different word, no? because many offices, and we are uh, in, in the construction practice, we have discovered no? that there are a new generation of offices that do many different work um, many different works, uh, designing buildings, some of them, but they are doing many other things. What we have discovered is that design is the center. Design is the main task. And we, if 20 years ago, 30 or as for line, I don't know, 50 years ago, was saying everything is architecture, we say for an architect, everything is a project. No? So we have to learn to do projects of everything, um, and perhaps only a few of those things will be buildings, no? Of course, the building is the, you know, is our favorite fetishist piece, uh, and we love them, but it's not necessary to do 100 or to build, uh, I don't know, this complete works that we, we see from other generations. Uh, the, the amount will be less for sure, but the intention and the capability of transform the life of the people will be much more intense. No? And these uh, architects, I think we have, they, they will have to learn uh, all these new uh, formats and all these new ways of, of working. Uh, but also um, the kind of um, living in a kind of uncertainty and in a stability that will be part of the new culture. And, and we also, the, the most interesting and, and perhaps optimistic, no, the way of keeping a kind of optimism about the future of our profession. No? Well, Juan, I mean, you've been uh, such a mentor to many of us and certainly to a whole generation. I, you know, I'm thinking about uncertainty and Spain with the crisis and how an incredible new generation emerged uh, um, you know, uh, very much thanks to your, you being their guide and, and we all, uh, but you're also forever young and, and <laughs> forever enthusiastic and reimagining uh, architects' uh, ways of engaging. And I really love this idea that this, it's not Hans Hollein's uh, everything is architecture or architecture is everything, but, uh, but uh, for an architect, everything is a project. Uh, and we certainly, um, then have many exciting projects to think about uh, um, now and, and in the future. Thank you, Juan. It's been wonderful as always. To Thank you, Mal. Speak with um, you. We'll um, see you soon for sure.